we want to solve the trig equation two cosine x sine x equals sine x on the interval from zero degrees to 360 degrees where the interval includes zero degrees and does not include 360 degrees. We will solve this equation by factoring, which means for the first step, we will set the right side of the equation equal to zero by subtracting sine x on both sides. We do not want to divide both sides by sine x because if we do, because we will be dividing out some of the solutions. So if we subtract sine x on both sides, we have the equation two cosine x sine x minus sine x equals zero. Now we will factor the left side by factoring out the greatest common factor of sine x. This gives us sine x times the quantity two cosine x minus one equals zero. Notice when we factor out sine x from sine x, it does leave us with a one. And now the product on the left is equal to zero, where sine x is equal to zero, or where two cosine x minus one is equal to zero. Now if we take a look at these two equations, the equation on the left is already solved for sine x, and therefore the next step is to solve two cosine x minus one equals zero for cosine x. To do this, the first step is to add one to both sides, which gives us two cosine x equals positive one, and then we divide both sides by two, which gives us cosine x equals one half. So now to find these solutions of the equation over the given interval, we need to find the angles where sine x is equal to zero and where cosine x is equal to one half. And let's do this using the unit circle. Remember on the unit circle, x equals cosine theta and y equals sine theta. Which means to find the angles that satisfy the equation that sine x equals zero, we need to find the angles on the unit circle where the y coordinate is equal to zero. So notice here, sine zero degrees is equal to zero because the y coordinate is zero here, and sine 180 degrees is also equal to zero because we have a y coordinate of zero here. So that gives us two solutions. That gives us x equals zero degrees as well as x equals 180 degrees. And now let's find the angles that give a cosine function value of positive one half which means we're looking for points on the unit circle where the x coordinate is one half. We know this will occur in either the first or fourth quadrants. Notice we have an x coordinate of one half here, which means the cosine function value of 60 degrees is equal to one half. We also have an x coordinate of one half here, which means cosine of 300 degrees is also equal to positive one half, which gives us two more solutions. We have x, equals 60 degrees, as well as x equals 300 degrees. So we have four solutions to the given equation over the given interval. And let's verify these four solutions graphically. To do this, we graph y equals two cosine x sine x, as well as y equals sine x on the same coordinate plane, and determine the x coordinates of the points of intersection which I've already done below. Notice we have a point of intersection on the left where x equals zero, another where x is equal to 60, as well as x equals 180, and also where x equals 300. These points of intersection represent the four solutions to the given equation. Now if we go back to our work for just a moment, the question doesn't ask, but I also wanna show how we can express all of these solutions to the given equation. Any angle that is coterminal to these four angles would be a solution to the given equation. So looking at zero degrees and 180 degrees, any coterminal angle to these two angles would have to be a multiple of 180 degrees. So if we let n equal an integer, we could say that x is equal to 180 and degrees where any multiple of 180 degrees would be coterminal to either zero degrees or 180 degrees. And any angle that's coterminal to 60 degrees or 300 degrees 
would also be a solution to the equation. So all the angles that are coterminal to 60 degrees would have to be in the form of x equals 60 plus 360 n degrees. And any angle that's coterminal to 300 degrees would have to be in the form of x equals 300 plus 360 n degrees. So again, the question does not ask, but if we were asked to find all of these solutions to the equation, we would take these three equations to express all of these solutions. I hope you found this helpful.